when I was a lay person in Thailand. I went with a couple of friends to see the movie The Exorcist. And the big climax of the film, where the exorcist gets possessed. Everybody in the, in the theater laughed, because he was such an amateur. Over there, they, they're really professional in their exorcisms. They know how to do it. I saw a case one time, a young woman who had been possessed by the spirit of an old man. who had killed himself, and nobody in the village knew that he had killed himself. Yeah, that's what she reported, and finally the relatives were confronted with this evidence after the spirit was, was driven out. And they had told everybody in the village that the guy had died in an automobile accident, but you know, it turned out that he actually killed himself. It was all very strange. It shook up a lot of my ideas about what was possible in the world. But the lesson I learned was that the young woman was someone who tended to be a daydreamer. She didn't pay much attention to the present moment. She was off in her own little worlds. She wasn't really inhabiting her body. She wasn't really inhabiting her mind. And that left room for other things to move in. And it's a good principle to think about, not only with the possibility of spirits moving in, but also unskillful emotions moving in. It's the same principle. And John Lee treats the two things as being basically the same. You are possessed, say, by greed or possessed by anger. And it'll claim that it has every right to be there. But you basically say, no, this is my place. This is my body. This is my mind. I don't need these things. And so the skill is to be very mindful, very alert, to fully inhabit your body, fully inhabit your mind, right here in the present moment. Remember the Buddhist teachings on fabrication. There's bodily fabrication, the way you breathe. Verbal fabrication, the way you talk to yourself, technically it's direct to thought and evaluation. You direct your thoughts to a particular topic and then you comment on it, you ask questions about it. You figure out what's right and what's wrong with it. And then there's mental fabrication, which gives you the raw materials for doing that, talking to yourself. Perceptions on the one hand and feelings on the other. You know, these things all have their causes. Some of the causes are in the present moment, some of the causes are in the past. And there are times when you can't do much about the past, but you can't do a lot about the present. Say an unskillful emotion moves in. Okay, first you can ask yourself, why have you let it take your breath? You can take the breath back. And so you breathe in a way that counteracts it. Try to notice where in the body it seems to have seized you. And find another part of the body that's more comfortable. And then as you stay with that more comfortable part of the body, then you think of that comfortable energy going back through the area where the emotion has seized you. So at the very least, you can reclaim part of the body. At best, you can reclaim the whole thing. So even though the emotion may still be going through the mind, it doesn't have to have an effect on the body. And that'll weaken it considerably. And then you look at the way you talk to yourself. Here again, John Lee says it's very similar to being possessed. The emotion is saying all kinds of things. And he says, think of it as just the germs and the worms in your body talking. They don't have any concern about your true well-being. Then interrupt the conversation. Interrupt the monologue. Ask questions. 
watch it for a while to see what it's saying and try to catch where it's wrong, where it's seeing things in an unrealistic way or an unskillful way, and then try to steer the conversation in another direction. And then look for the perceptions that are lying behind all this. Many of these perceptions come from your lizard brain, especially the ones related to strong emotions. They have flashed to the mind and then go back and hide. So you have to watch carefully. If you don't see the perceptions and what's, what underlying perception is controlling this conversation, you can try other perceptions. Try some of the, the Buddhist perceptions, the perceptions about sensuality. It's interesting when he talks about the drawbacks of sensuality, it's mainly in terms of images. He's trying to provide you with new perceptions, because we see sensuality as so attractive. But his first one is of a dog chewing a bone. It's not an attractive image at all. Of a hawk with a piece of meat that's being chased by other hawks and crows. You want to tear it apart so it can get the meat. An image of borrowed goods, a person carrying a torch going against the wind. All these are images to make the idea of sensuality unattractive, to counteract the mind's tendency to see it as attractive. Or the Buddha's image of the dealing with anger. You come along, just like a monk is looking for a piece of cloth. He finds a dirty piece of cloth. Part of it's dirty, part of it's clean. He takes it and he cuts away the dirty part. He takes just the clean part. Why? Because he needs a cloth. One of the perceptions you have about anger is that you don't need the other person, and you don't need to be good to the other person. You're somehow in a position above and outside, where you're not going to be affected by your anger. And the Buddhist perceptions try to make you realize that you don't have that power. You, you are a person in need. You need to think about the good points of that person. Otherwise, you're liable to behave in ways that are really going to be bad. Because when anger comes in, shame and compunction just go out the window. You get a very narrow perspective on things. And then within that narrow perspective, things that are unskillful look skillful. Because the whole point of Compunction is thinking about, well, what are the consequences of this going to be? Whereas when anger takes over, all you do is want to express your anger and express your frustration with no thought for the consequences. So you've got to pull back and remind yourself there's such a thing as karma. We live in a world where karma is 24 7. It's not the kind of laws that they have in some countries where the laws are on the books. And they sometimes apply them and sometimes don't, depending on whether they like you or not. The laws of karma are impartial, and they're 24-7. So you change your images. The same with fear, anxiety. What is the image that's driving that? Try to dig it out. Question it. What you're doing is taking advantage of the basic principle of causality in Buddhism. When the Buddha expressed his awakening, sometimes he would go into a lot of detail, sometimes it would express it in very short form. The shortest form was essentially a principle of causality, which comes down to the fact that the present moment is shaped by two kinds of things. 
your past actions and your present actions. It's because of the present actions that the past actions can be experienced at all. So you want to look into your present actions. Take some responsibility. Don't just say, well, the, the emotion is there and I have to give into it. That's a fatalistic way of thinking, which is certainly not the way the Buddha taught. You hear so much that the Buddha teaches acceptance, acceptance. I don't even know what the Pali word for acceptance is. And he certainly didn't accept the fact that there would be unskillful emotions going on. He says you try to get rid of them in the same way that you notice that your hair were on fire, you try to put out the fire. Now, in some cases, the fire will have to burn for a while because past actions are pretty strong. But there's an awful lot you can do in the present moment. This is why he gives his analysis of the present moment in terms of fabrication, in terms of the aggregates, in terms of the sense media and properties. All of these things play a role in how we experience the present moment. And all too often we let these activities in the present moment get possessed by greed, aversion, delusion, whatever. And then we complain about the results. You have to realize we can play a role at this. If you don't want to accept something, accept the fact that you have a role that you can play. Learn how to master the different skills that are needed. This is why we meditate. To see these processes of fabrication in action. You've got the breath, that's bodily fabrication. You're talking to yourself about the breath, evaluating the breath. It's verbal fabrication. Then you've got images in mind about how the breath comes in and out of the body, where you're going to be focused. You're getting some hands on experience in how to use these fabrications to create a sense of well being right here, right now. Then you want to realize you can take those same insights and apply them anytime. Because the same principles are acting anytime. There was an article a while back on the different meanings of the word sankara. And the author's trying to make the point that the Buddha uses the word sankara, fabrication, in lots of different contexts. But they went ahead and assigned very different meanings to sankara in each context, and they were all unrelated. For instance, he insisted that when the Buddha is talking about bodily, verbal, and mental fabrication in the context of dependent core rising, it was simply a matter of past karma. Whereas when he talked about in the context of meditation, it was you know, the breath, the directed thought and evaluation, perceptions and, and feelings. He said these are two totally unrelated things. Which is missing the potential for a really good insight. Which is that your physical karma comes from the breath, is expressed first through the breath. Your verbal karma has to first come through direct thought and evaluation. Your mental karma has to come through perceptions and feelings. In other words, the processes that run rebirth are happening right here, and you can master them and be more skillful in them. So that not only can you Reclaim your body, reclaim your mind right now when they're being possessed by greed, aversion, delusion, or fear. You also gain some mastery over the, the processes by which your life is going to be playing itself out. Now and on into the future. It's all happening right here. It all can be mastered right here. So don't let other things take over the present moment. You want to take control. You want to reclaim these things. Learn how to use them skillfully. So you too can become a professional. Make sure that this is your territory. Nobody else can come in. So 
at this weak point, which has been so easily taken over in the past, becomes your strong point. Nobody else can use you. Nobody else can move in, because you're fully inhabiting what you've got right here, right now. 